Good day, I'm Tamar McHale and this is your GIS News for Monday, May 16. The committee established to investigate last week's collapse at the Blue Diamond Royalton Negril should be presenting its report to the local government minister later this week. The committee members, along with Minister Desmond Mackenzie and members of the Hanover Parish Council, toured the construction site and held a technical meeting on the weekend as part of their investigation. We are using technology to assist in assessing what has taken place. One of the tests sought to assess whether the columns at the site of the accident met the basic standard for strength. We have used the snitch armor to carry out the compressive test of the column to see that the strength is adequate for the design of the column. And this minimum strength must be 3,000 PSI, that is pounds per square inch. And what I have received here is 3,402 PSI which is above the 3,000 required. Minister Mackenzie says the results of the technical tests, a report from the hotel developers and a comprehensive report from the Hanover Parish Council have been handed over to the committee to inform its work. Following this investigation, the committee's next task is Royalton Trelawney location. The hotel's deputy managing director, Daniel Diaz, meanwhile expressed optimism that the original construction deadline of December 2016 would still be met. It really depends on which the outcome is, but uh, we're confident that uh, with, the, with the forward and commitment of everyone, we will be able to uh, meet the deadlines that we have uh, for our guests and for this wonderful new product for Jamaica. In the meantime, local government minister Desmond Mackenzie says he will be meeting with the Hanover Parish Council and the Negril Green Island Planning Authority this week to address challenges they're experiencing. I know that there's an area of grievances that exist there and I'll be meeting with them to discuss the concerns and to see how best uh, we can work it out because both organizations are crucial to the development of the parish. Minister Mackenzie revealed that the committee set up to investigate the Royalton collapse would also be looking at the weaknesses that exist in the parish council. And the committee has, was tasked with the responsibility of not just finding out what went wrong, but also to make recommendations, not just to prevent what took place, but recommendations on how to improve the quality of the service delivery of the Anova Parish Council. Education Minister Senator Ruel Reed has asserted that government will not defund high schools. He was responding to concerns raised on Saturday by the Jamaica Association of Principals of Secondary Schools about the new tuition-free policy. The ministry will not defund high schools. We will ensure instead that all schools are adequately funded in order to carry out their functions to educate the nation's children. This is why we've asked each school to provide us with its individual budget in order to accurately determine the level of funding required. Meanwhile, the minister reiterated that parents could continue to make their contributions to schools as determined by the school boards and parent-teachers associations. Starting today, a team from the ministry in partnership with the National Parents Teachers Association of Jamaica has begun dialogue with parents about their role under the new tuition-free policy. State Minister in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, Floyd Green, has begun a series of fact-finding visits of residential child care facilities as part of the proposed strategic review of these homes, which will be undertaken. The minister on Wednesday met with wards and staff of the St. John Basco Home for Boys in Hatfield, Manchester. I plan to have a substantial meeting with all the operators, right? But I have started the process to see how much homes I can visit because each of them have their own special needs and their, and their special desire. And as a ministry, we'll have to try and, and, and treat with. During his visit, the minister also gave handwritten letters of encouragement to the boys. And finally, plans are in place to further expand National Children's Day celebrations. This year's celebration was the biggest in four years with volunteers and members of the National Child Month Committee greeting students and donating tokens of appreciation in six locations island-wide. The committee says it hopes to expand its reach going forward. Next year we are looking for more sponsorship because it has to be in all 14 parishes. That is our plan. I'm really appealing to other persons outside to really see this as a very important event of the National Child Month Committee as all the other 
activities are, but if they could just come on board and really help us on this special day to make the children feel loved. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Tamara McHale. Thanks for watching.